The opinions expressed on the Custody Queen Show are for informational purposes only and are not a substitute for personal, professional legal advice. The persons discussed are fictional and not based on actual clients. Thought it was love, had kids in between. You can count on us with the custody queens. Yeah, you can count on us with the custody queens. Good morning, Go Country. It's Sam and Kristen, your custody queens. We are so excited to spend another day with you. Yep, and we are following Rob and Larry for the legal hour. What a good show. Big shout out to the brothers on law. And what a great week. We have such a fun topic, and there's so many stories I want to get into, Sam. Yeah, this week's topic is all about managing expectations, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, and before we get there, Sam, I know you're a little crazy, but how does the audience know you're crazy? Like, I know I'm crazy when I clean impulsively before the house cleaner comes. Like I stress so much every Thursday when the house cleaner comes that I ask myself, what is the purpose of the house cleaner? Because I literally am mopping and doing laundry and picking up all of my bathroom stuff, which isn't a very large quantity due to BoxyCharm and Ipsy and Birchbox and a new one, Beachley, that I just signed up for. But I put myself through so much stress to clean before the house cleaner. And I do get that from my mother. And I know it's crazy, but what is there something that you do that you know is crazy? I mean, I I would say probably for me is that I can sleep anywhere and I I don't take this lightly. I literally, if I am just kind of stressed out in my living room, I'll just take a quick little nap literally on my floor in the living room for like five or 10 minutes. It's like borderline narcolepsy. It, it presents really crazy, but a quick, refreshing nap for me, there's nothing that can recharge me. I envy that with every every bone in my body because unless I can dedicate like four hours, a nap is useless to me. And I have a hard enough time sleeping in general that like a nap is, it's completely off the table. So with our kind of topic, managing expectations, I did want to talk about something that I personally can't stop talking about and haven't for months, which is finagling getting Kristen, my favorite blonde, to jump into the ocean with me in Cabo and go shark diving. Yes, and I did it. And I did it willingly and very excitedly, but uh, it, it was definitely a, I don't know that it was my bucket list. I. It was definitely an adventure for me. I know it was on Sam's bucket list, but I'm a very adventurous person, but that was crossing, the, I, that was pretty good for me. Yeah, it was the absolute coolest thing I think I've ever done. We were so lucky to jump in and swim right next to a eight or nine foot. Silky. Yeah, it was, it was fabulous. Managing my expectation, I was really less concerned of myself getting a bite and more concerned about everyone else um, because I know that I basically force everyone to go with me and so I was a little more concerned with everyone else's safety, but at, what a blast. Yeah, and just to give all of our listeners just a quick you know, picture, illustration of what we're talking about. Imagine you're on a boat with eight to 10 foot swells Water is literally coming over the side of the boat, splashing everyone. They are throwing chum and fish heads and guts, and it creates kind of an oil residue that goes out about 100 100 yards. And that is out in the water, and it took about 45 minutes. They put a water bottle on the end of a line, and when the shark bites that water bottle, everybody yells, Shark (laughs) o'clock. And, and for some reason, that was code for me to jump right into the chum where there was an eight. <laughs> it was There was zero thought process behind it. And all I was thinking is, we really got to see the shark for Sam. We really got to do this. Oh, and yeah. Bless Kristen, because I was the last one in the water and I was very panicked that I wasn't going to see the shark and everyone else is in there. And I look over at Kristen and I'm like the happiest water puppy that's ever existed. And I look over at Kristen and she's like, we good? Are we we good? (laughs) It's time to get out. (laughs) Yeah, and it truly was facing your fears. And I, as I was hanging on this rope, 
with no life jacket, trying to stay afloat with a snorkel and mask that was significantly bigger than my face and I was swallowing ocean water. I, I was literally sitting there thinking, I'm really proud of myself that I'm actually doing this. And I was simultaneously thinking that I was crazy at the same time and hoping I would get home to my three kids. And I think the scariest part of that entire adventure was the point where you knew the shark was there, the shark was circling. And there's no cage, by the way. Oh yeah, there's no cage. This is this is free diving, swimming. Um, and, and you're jumping into the chum. You're doing it intentionally, freely, voluntarily. And that point where you jump in, but before you can really focus and swim under the water and, and look with your goggles on, you have no clue where that shark is. All you know is that it's just swimming around the boat and you are jumping right into it. So that, that two minute period where I just jumped in, had no clue where that shark was, but clearly knew there was a nine foot shark. That to me was, that showed exactly what we try to talk to you guys all the time about is that two minutes of uncertainty and the world of, of just what's unknown, that is, if you can overcome that part of a litigation case and a custody case, everything else is smooth sailing. And you have to admit that when you were in the water, despite the swells, once you were situated, it was truly a beautiful thing. It was, except for the very short period of time that the silky nine foot shark was swimming directly at me. <laughs> and I had to have a conversation with myself, do I, swim and the shark thinks that I'm bait or do I just sit here and hope that the you know boat instructor next to me hits it and defends me yeah so what's next what is next so we're going to talk about managing your expectations from the onset of the case all the way through the case and this is something that Sam and I preach 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 if you as a party to the action have unreasonable expectations, you will never be successful in your case. Your kids will never be successful. You and your attorney and your relationship will never be successful. So when I talk to a client, I make sure that they understand not just the next step, but the next 12 steps and that they understand the worst case scenario and the best case scenario. Because if that person, my client, understands each phase of the case, then there is no question of what they believe is gonna happen at court. And you have to set your expectations based on reality, not based on what we believe could happen. And what I mean by that, and Kristen and I were kind of discussing this a little earlier in the week is we get so caught up in the realm of social media and Google. people taking right people taking quick pictures and appearing to be doing a lot better than they really are i mean it's the world we live in so the question really that we pose is are we setting expectations based on what we perceive the world to be like rather than what it really is yeah just look at social media sam we talk about this a lot. So you could look at a picture of me all glammed up, my hair's done, my makeup's done, and I look like my world is together. I look like I have no issues, no problems. I got eight hours of sleep, I'm well rested, and I am just owning every aspect of my life. And then you look at a picture that, you know, my husband might have taken of me with the kids that may be a little bit less favorable or flattering, and you put the two side by side, one is a perceived notion of what perfection I'm, is. Perfection. And then the other one is real life. But I will say, Kristen, you do have it all together. You're a human, and we all are, but you have it all together. Some days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I try. I try. So on the topic of perfection, I think that another expectation that we all have is if we are perfect, we can't ask for help. And if you don't ask for help, you can't be helped. And so Kristen normally talks about a couple of little pointers whenever I come in and say, hey, you know, th this wasn't perfect or how do we switch the situation? And she always kind of recenters and focuses me because if you're not humble enough to admit that you need help in a situation, you are not gonna get the help. And at some point you're gonna start drowning. Absolutely, Sam. And look at your life and your custody case and your family law case and your family as a Jenga game, right? You might be able to slowly pull one piece and everything stays together, 
But Sam, what's going to happen at some point in that Jenga game? Well, it's going to fall. And and there's just no getting around it. Every Jenga game ends when the puzzle and the pieces fall. And it falls because you don't have the infrastructure or the support in place to maintain the foundation. So Sam, you know that song by Marin Morris? Yeah. The, the one called The Bones? I love that song. It's so great. I have it playing all the time in my office, but it truly talks about the infrastructure and the support and the foundation. And the foundation includes managing your expectations, understanding who will help you, how you get what you need. And there's a couple questions that I always tell people that I'm meeting with, whether they're a potential client or they're a client. Number one, know when to ask for help. What's number two, Sam? It's okay to ask for help. Yeah, and that's something that I think that you and I both struggle with, that we strive for perfection, sometimes to our detriment. And number three, and this is a big one that I struggle with every day of my life, learn to say no when it's appropriate. You don't have to be on every board. You don't have to be the best mom. You don't have to be the best dad. You don't have to be the soccer coach. You don't have to be the PTA mom. Just learn to say no when it's appropriate. And how does that apply in our in our environment, Sam? That's a great question, Kristen. So when we think about managing expectations, it's twofold. We're thinking about your life as human beings, and we're also thinking about the family law process and litigation in general. And it's important to manage expectations in both areas. We often get stuck in situations where we want to appear perfect, both in reality, but more often what we see is in the family law realm. You have to set expectations not only in your life, but in family law so that you understand that things happen, that you're not going to be perfect, and that a good outcome can come, but you need to, in my opinion, redefine what a good outcome is. So in family law, if your expectation is, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to you know, take husband or wife, as the case may be, for all of their money, that's not a reasonable expectation. Why? That's not California family law. So you need to kind of bring yourself back to reality and think to yourself, if I have an expectation, does this make sense? And that's also a very emotionally driven response. Right. And if you have an expectation, I think a good sort of mental exercise is, you know, not necessarily look yourself in the mirror, but you could look yourself in the mirror. How, would you accept a offer for settlement or would you agree if the situation was exactly reversed? For example, if you are asking for somebody to pay you $10,000 a month in support. If the situation was reversed, would you agree to that? Probably not, or maybe you would. If so, maybe it's reasonable. It might be, depending on the case, but you have to check in with that. So what we advise is that you have to manage your expectations on a personal level, as well as within your case. There is no failure or you don't go home crying from a hearing if you understand what is reasonably calculated to happen at that hearing. If you understand and you have real conversations with your attorney and you have reasonable expectations based on the family code, the status quo, the best interest of your children, all of those things will come into play when the court makes an order. So you have to manage your own expectations. As attorneys, Sam and I will tell you repeatedly that you need to manage your expectations, but it's also our job to manage your expectations. I think personally that is one of the number one jobs as an attorney is to manage your client's expectations. I can tell you that when I see an attorney that I get ludicrous letters from that literally are baseless, unsupported by the facts, um, they are derogatory, they are unproductive. Yeah, and they're just truly written because the client their client told them to. You know what the first thing I say? Clearly that attorney has no client control and cannot 
control their own client's expectations. How do I expect to do anything with that attorney when they can't control their own client? And if you have an attorney that is like this, you need to call the custody queens at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. And along with managing expectations is the understanding that it is unreasonable to take the position that your universe is not going to change and that your home environment is not going to change and that it takes a village to raise our children. Co-parenting is not a solo journey. You could not have said that better, Kristen. And thinking that you can take it on on your own or spending time blaming another parent or person that is helping you raise your children is not going to be helpful to your children or your mental health. Yeah, and someone told me this one time and it didn't really resonate until not too long ago. And it was actually a conversation that I was having with someone in my area of law. And they told me that if you love your kids more than you hate your ex and his or her family, you will find success in this process. Now, what success means to me and you is probably different but you will find peace, there will be a resolution, and you can move forward. And by by loving your kids more than you hate your ex, you are also managing your own expectations. And I think that the reality is most people love their children more than they hate their ex, but it's such a valuable saying and phrase to remember because we get caught up in the moment and so your behavior may be something that is more towards getting back at your ex rather than doing something beneficial for your children and if you consistently take action to go after your ex or 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 try to get back at your ex you're not doing a service to your children you're just not and they recognize it Absolutely. And I, I, I think you're going down a slippery slope that will not end well. And you're going to end up paying your attorneys a ton of money that isn't going to be conducive to your case. All right. You want to get into the celebrity breakdown, Sam? Absolutely. So this week we are going to talk about kind of an interesting case. This is a celebrity breakup where they were actually never married, but they were together or engaged for seven years. So we have Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis. And they have two children together, correct? They do. And what's interesting is because they weren't married and they never actually got married, there's no divorce. No, there isn't. And it sounds from from what we can see kind of in, in the media that they are taking a very reasonable approach to the next step in their relationship, which is a co-parenting relationship. And Sam, what would a co-parenting relationship that is healthy and amicable and reasonable, what would that look like if you have two parents that work similar schedules, live not too far apart, both can facilitate transportation activities, all of those logistical issues. What would what would a schedule look like? I'm a huge fan of sharing your children, and California tends to agree with me, by the way. But if there aren't safety concerns and you guys as parents have a lot of meaningful and available time that, that overlaps or that puts yourself in a position where you can both spend a lot of time with your children, I think that that's the best. That doesn't mean, and Kristen and I often cringe when we hear the words 50-50 because your, your children aren't parts, they're not property. You could have an equal timeshare and that sounds like a case where that may work. There's obviously deviations from that, but we wanna maximize time for each parent and that child so that that child has an opportunity to develop a bond and maintain a bond in some cases with their parents. And they deserve that just because your relationship is ending doesn't mean that their personal relationship with mom or dad is as well. Yeah. And the end of their relationship, whether you're married or not, that is not a failure. It's just the evolution of a new phase in their life. So instead of being 
partners, you know, in the romantic in the romantic sense, they are co-parents now. My favorite shared visitation schedule is referred to as a 223 or a 225, depending on how you're looking at, but that is a true shared timeshare. Generally, one parent has Monday, Tuesday, the other parent has Thursday, Friday, and then they alternate the weekends. Now, clearly, there's so many questions that I would ask before I would give my advice on whether that was doable or reasonable or in the best interest for your case. Uh, I.e. how far you live apart, the work schedules. Is there a safety concern? But what's your favorite schedule Sam what do you what do you like to propose if there's no safety concern and it's a it's a situation like this you know I I'm with you when we're talking about breaking up a week for me it is just so important to maximize that time depending on the age of the children it may be more reasonable if you have teenagers to do something like a week on week off when you have younger children I tend to feel that they should spend you know smaller gaps of time with each parent just to make sure they have a lot of contact but you know Ultimately, the underlying premise is a lot of time with both parents. That's what helps your children. And, you know, just kind of as you were saying, when we're talking about, you know, not failing a relationship or moving on to a next next phase in your life, your children see that. Depending on how old they are, they may be very in tune with it. You want to remember that, and Kristen always says this, your children have little ears and they can hear everything and they can see everything. And they're very perceptive. They know when things aren't good. In fact, they they know more than you think they know. So we always want to put our children in situations where they are set up for success and feel happy and healthy and not in, in a toxic environment. Yeah. In a sense, we are managing our children's expectations too. So in summary, you need to have an attorney that will manage your expectations from the onset. That's us, the custody queens. You know, like us, hate us, we are direct, we are blunt, and our mission is to provide you with success. And And education. So, you know, to that end, if you have a question or, you know, want to consult with Kristen and I, please do. You can reach out to us at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. Yeah. And a good example of what Sam and I would not do, just to summarize exactly what we've been talking about, if we get a call where someone is saying, I want sole legal, sole physical, and I want dad to have supervised visitation, but there is no safety concern up until our date of separation. We have both been actively involved in the children's life. We've both done doctor's appointments. We've both done soccer. But now that we're separated, I don't want dad to have any time with the children unless it's you know with a supervisor at a police station. Yeah, you know, the first thing I hear in that is, I don't want not it's in our child's best interest to have this set up it you're you're again getting away from the premise of loving your children more than you hate your ex it's not about you it's not about your ex it's about your kids absolutely and if you're having trouble managing your own expectations reach out get a therapist Uh, with telemedicine at your fingertips. You simply download apps. And now with the pandemic, we have so many resources that are available simply by, you know, through Zoom and WebEx. But get yourself into a place where you can manage your own expectations. Get an attorney that's going to help you manage your expectations. And remember, it takes a village. You're not in this alone. So now that we've covered all of this, really important educational stuff that goes along with what we do every day. Sam, let's lighten it up and let's do some TMI. Oh yeah, TMI, I'm going first. Hope it's a good one. So for anyone that hasn't been listening, TMI stands for too much information. What has been your favorite city you visited? I would probably say I've been around because of my soccer days, but I would probably say my favorite city that I've recently visited is Edmonds in Washington. My best friend ever, Cassie, lives there. It is such a cute little town. It's right on the water. It has every season. Everyone kind of goes out during the summer months and has 
you know, little summer markets and there's just great shopping there. It's a great time. How about you, Kristen? I love those little towns. My hands down favorite city in the United States, I haven't been able to go clearly in the last year, um, is Chicago. I went there for a Packers game. You know, you can't beat the dive bars, you know, where everything's on the honor system. The downtown, the shopping, the fresh air, the bean. There's just so much to do. And I love it. The weather was great. We went in early November. We went for my birthday and it rained one day and it was super chilly another. And then it was kind of warm the other day. But I just love the culture, the architecture. It's oh, we should plan a trip. We should, as soon as we can get out and uh, see the world again. I'm really looking forward to that in 2021. All right, now it's my turn, Sam. Hope you didn't slip any here that are not production approved. All right, if you had three wishes, what would they be? What a great question. My first wish would be that COVID would go away that would help the entire world and we could all go back to our quote unquote normal lives, travel, our kids could be free and out of this crisis. But that would be my number one wish is for COVID to go away and our country and world to be free of the COVID-19 pandemic. The second wish I would love to be granted is for my six month old to sleep through the night. <laughs> that I think sleep is so detrimental to one's mental state. And I think that not getting enough can be debilitating. And sometimes I would love a little bit more. And my third wish is for all of you out there that don't have competent counsel or that are thinking about hiring an attorney and just haven't made the call because you haven't found the right attorney or you haven't found one that you're entirely comfortable and confident in, I wish all of you to call the Custody Queens at 1-800-419-7772. That's 1-800-419-7772. We do case assessments on each and every individual case. We come up with a strategic plan that is in the best interest of you and your children. And what else do we do, Sam? We do it all, Kristen. We really focus on educating you on your case and coming up with that plan to really put you in a good position moving forward. Yeah. And you know what? We're good human beings too. I just like to throw that out and I'm not tooting our own horns, but I do believe that we are good at what we do and we're also empathetic and we're human. And we lose a lot of sleep over your cases, trust me. We do. I would never tell you to do something that I wouldn't do myself. And I think that's really important coming from your attorneys. And manage your expectations throughout the whole case. And remember, when you're communicating with an attorney, they don't work for free. And that's something that I would have in a console right off the bat so that you understand how your case is gonna be worked and there's no surprises. And that little example is how we would run your entire case. So you understand how everything is dealt with in each and every corner that you're gonna go around. Because you deserve to have your expectations managed from a legal aspect. And you know the reverse to that is you need to manage your own expectations in your own life. Yeah, and remember, when you call 1-800-419-7772, leave a message and you will get an assessment with either Sam McBride or myself and our fabulous intake team. So make sure you call 1-800-419-7772. You can also follow at Samantha McBride on her personal Instagram handle. I'm Custody Queen Kristen. You can follow us on Custody Queen social media. We are always doing giveaways and we want to help you and we want you to participate in all of the fun stuff that we have going on. We are here for you. And lastly, Kristen, as always, remember, Let Let love love rule. rule.